we're not live at the moment. I'll tell you when we when we're going live.
said, John Morton knows what the ladies don't want because JD now know how to rock. Tick, 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 time. I see my sambo. Chupa, ba, 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 I told my sister I'm on fire for fire. Told my Billy Kaki to you. Ladies and gentlemen, as Mr. Mikare, wow, man, welcome, <laughs> 2020, Mike Mikare. Man, let's get let's get things started, brother. Like um, first and foremost, once again, thank you. And for those actually watching, we're actually live. This is not scripted, not pre-recorded. We are here live in 275 Mangere East or Mangere. Central, Central, Mangere Central. <laughs> um, here in all I, here in Auckland, New Zealand, and here we're here in Mister Mikare Pao. Sir, how are you today? Man, I'm feeling great, brother. As you may have already observed over the last 16 days, I've been on a plant-based, uh, meat-free diet. I see that, bro. And uh, you know, it's hard to believe that 16 days ago I was lying in bed, couldn't get out of bed, struggling with my diabetes, and I just woke up one day and just said, "I need to live." We had the discussion um, not too long ago. Um, I think a couple of to- um, not too long ago when we did that production, we we'll delve into that. Yeah. That um, he had diabetes, and I didn't know that. And and yeah. we, I talked a tiny bit about it. About it's all about the diet. Sugar is a silent killer. It's sugar. It's sugar. Yeah, we go on about fats, but really, it's that sugar. It's mm. the it's the it's the ingredient that's in everything. It's had a huge impact in my life. I couldn't have anything without sugar. I didn't realize how much sugar I was actually into. Fizzy drinks, you know, it just tolls up alcohol, so on. And then, I, like I said, 16 days ago, I just woke up and just realized I needed to to love myself to in order to love others around me. Because if I didn't take care of myself, I wouldn't be around that much longer for my children. And right now, with the, with the career that I have now, the focus that I have now, uh, it's really centered around my children. Yeah. Uh, and this word family, or what we call in Māori, fa, whānau, a whānau, or whānau um, in Tongan, or kāinga for extended family. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's a word that's um, surfacing more as, a, as something that can be a great solution to, it's, a, it's, our, it's our headache, but it's also our solution. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm, what I'm in love with, is my family. Obviously, it's, it's uh, especially in our culture, in the Polynesian culture, it's not something that we can just switch on and do these sort of things. Um, and I'll, Is this something that you've just like, okay, I'm going to wake up the next morning and do it, or was it a slow progression? I think in, in individuals like myself, uh, the kind of life, I've always lived on the edge. I'm a person that's, um, I've been an entertainer most of my life. Mm-hmm. I've, um, you know, I've always sort of been sort of, at the, when I say the edge, I'm like, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll take my, I'll give you all my clothes. I'm the kind, that kind of person. You that's know. what we're doing. But that's Polynesian blood. And I think that's in our DNA, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. But it's to our detriment too. You know, oh yes, it's, it's our weakness. It's just <laughs> like, but I've, I've, you, you can, you can be that, but you can sort of organize yourself a bit better to prepare. You know, there's, there's calculated risks now, mm. and that's just really about education mm. and being, um, up to the play with how to sort of mentally facilitate yourself. Mm. Let's, let's get down to the roots. I know we had a little chat about this. Mm. Um, Man, your bio, I struggled to fit it in on the, oh, uh, on, on the description when he sends it through. Um, one of the things that fascinated me, bro, is is you mentioned that you guys started from Ponsonby, but let's just strip this right back. Let's yeah. just uh, give us a bit of background about your parents and, and your journey. Um, did they, were they raised up here in New Zealand or were they born? Give, let's just strip it right back. Yeah, I mean, I was born and ra- uh, raised by my Cook Island parents, mm-hmm. uh, grandparents. My mum and dad, uh, my dad is Pukapukan, and my mother is Māori. Yeah. But my, my, my parents have been separated since I was little, so I've always had a Tongan father uh, in terms of my mother and my stepfather. Yep. So that's why I've always grown up with uh, a Tongan side to, to myself. So, What was your dad's last name, by the way? Uh, F- Filiti, oh, he's a Tanginoa from oh. Vavau. Oh. 
oh man, my um my, my wife, she's watching. She's gonna, mm. she's gonna love this because my father in law is from Vavau. If we got any people Ola, from Bangai Motu, you know what but, I'm but saying? That's my father was oh, from yeah, Bangai Motu. That's where the tough Tongans come from. Right? Uh, don't say that, bro. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Anyways, the, you know, Ulukalala people, you know, you know what I'm saying? And oh, you know, I must have a big mention to all the Hihifo people out there too. Oh, uh, Cause <laughs> if you're watching this live, man, do drop, drop us a comment below. Where are you from in Tonga and the Cook Islands? Please do so. But um, growing up in Ponsonby, um, I must say, you know, they were they were tough people. Those people, those Polynesians in yes. those days, everything was uh, was raw. Every um, everyone, uh, there's an illusion that we all got on. Um, I can remember. Uh, there's quite a bit of friction and tension between Pacific Islanders, but you know everything was sorted out by the fist back then. Um, it was nothing like what we saw in terms of stabbings and things that was very quite foreign um, in those days. That is, even on the rugby field when Ponsonby played Richmond or played City Newton, you know those are the days. Those are the eras I grew up with, and some of those families, like the I will say, the Cockers, um, the Schwankies. Um, the Solomonas, um, the Muffies, the Finau, you know, and even going into the uh, La Kippers, um, different Polynesian families, the Masters, you know, they're just, it was just the melting pot of Polynesian back in those days. And so our schools were quite full of Polynesian kids. Mm -hmm. So when I go to Mangan, I see heaps of Polynesian kids. It was like that in Ponsonby. True. Days. You wouldn't see that True. today. Why is it, um, you know, we, we hear it, a lot and especially the, the early movies like Shione's Weddings and stuff that um, that a lot of when, when the early days when the Polynesians migrated here to New Zealand they resided in Ponsum is it, is it because it's like just help me paint the picture was it was just was it just the, like the Mangri back in those days or was it just super cheap to, to live there I think it's all those things yeah I mean the the population that we have today is not what we had those days definitely uh, definitely could, I mean the incomes I mean all the industry was focused around central, mm -hmm. the wharfs, the laundries, the hospitals, the freezing works didn't really emerge until like the 60s. Um, oh, there would have been sort of remnants of old freezing works where a lot of our people sort of amalgamated to. But my, my, my experience of central growing up in Ponsonby uh, is probably a little different from, uh, because I go back even further with my whakapapa in terms of Māori. Oh, so really? Before the Polynesians came to Auckland, my ancestors were migrating from the far north in terms of Ahipara, Kaipara. So oh, those wow. areas like Freeman's Bay. Yeah, yeah. So Freeman's Bay is all land, but when my my ancestors were coming here, that was all water there. So Victoria Park and all that, there was no there was no land there. That was all water. What do you mean, like water, like the beach? It was so, the water. The the yeah. whole ocean used to come right up to Freeman's oh, Bay, and they pretty much just built that. That's been filled in by rubbish wow. and so forth. Yeah, so those are the days, my grand. And then my um, my love for music came from my auntie Grace Bidwa, who ran the Māori Community Centre across the road. I from, know some Bidwas. The Bidwas, yep, yeah. Yep. Well, that my um, uncle Peter Bidwa was a famous New Zealand ballroom dancer. And um, gay is the hill. Koi whakaleti. Koi are the best ones for dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was extravagant. You know, we all, you know, all his trousers were ironed and shoes and so forth. Very young. But yeah, my aunt, my auntie, my granddad's sister, Grace Bidwa, ran the Māori Community Centre for years. Wow. It's now shut. And so, but all the big bands, you name Billy T, Prince Tuiteka, the High Marks. Yep, yep, yep. Herbs. They all, they all came. Yeah, all of, oh, Herbs. They're a bit later. Oh, okay. So the music industry was thriving much earlier than before. Herb kind of, came kind of go always my age, mate. So. Yeah. Herb was the start of like the resistance. Yeah. Yeah. But back before the resistance came in, all the, you know, all the activism starting through all the consciousness of Maori students going through Nga Tamato and attending universities, that's mm -hmm. when it started to, um, uh, to emerge. Oh, wow. And then you had the arrivals of the Polynesians and then sort of the Panthers came into that era. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, I knew. So when all those like Will Ilolahia and all those cats like deal with Karaka and mm -hmm. Tingi Ness, all their kids were all my mates. Oh, true. So Shea, Shea Fu and all them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all grew up in the same era. He's yeah. seventy four. I'm seventy four. Nineteen seventy four. That is. You know, you know. Look, nineteen seventy four, mate. <laughs> Let's say that's all the tough guys were born in nineteen seventy four. Oh, true. Now nah, we're not the tough guys. We're all the. 
articulate guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's my experience of um, of Ponsonby, and um, it was a beautiful era. The glue pot. I yep, don't know if yep. you remember the glue pot. I, I've heard of it. I'm not, I'm not. As a little kid, I used to go my my mate by my barling mate Michael Puddock. His grandmother ran the glue pot for years. Yeah. So as little kids after school, we always go to the glue pot, watch the bands who are warming up, drink the coke for free. Just, just, just uh, for for those who are actually watching, they may be watching. Just yeah. can you just pa- help us understand what the glue pot is because they might think it's a pot of glue. That the <laughs> so, what, so what's the glue pot? It was the center of um, Auckland live music. Oh, so wow. all the first bands and uh, the scene was really popping there. Um, mm-hmm. You had some of the Hello Sailor. Oh um, yep yep yep. I've heard of them. Bands like. Um, the, the Kinks, um, Annie Crummer is a young lady, Mark Hicken, the Ponsonby Express. Uh, I'm waffling off names that people just haven't heard in years. You yeah, know? Yeah. I can because I was there. Yeah, I saw them. Standard Issue, a young Polynesian R&B band was emerging at the same time as like Adisha. Yep. Adisha. Yeah. They were playing up at, up at the glue pot. Wow. I was a very little kid then. Wow. And I saw them. We used to see them. I used to see all the bands rehearsing. Didn't know who they were. You know, as we talk about music, it must be a little bit different these days. It was back in those days, it was like live music. And, yeah. You know, bands and instruments where this day and age, is, it's a little bit different. Like, um, I know it's times that, I know it's just the, the times how it, things have moved along where everything's like sort of a digital age. Um, but let me tell you one thing. And when I first saw you in Manhattan, is there is nothing like live live music, eh? Nah. There's nothing like uh, watching live sport, whether whether it's well, live sport, boxing, just anything live. It's <laughs> just that atmosphere, and it's something that you can't just bottle up and do it live. You know what I mean? When we watch something live on TV, it's it's just not it's not as different as um we watch it live. Well, if you go to a fight cover. <laughs> Yeah, you know what live music is. Go to a fight cover. <laughs> All those fight cover people, right? You know what? You know what he's talking about. You know, when I say live, I talk, uh, and, and I am exper- I've, I love the fight cover environment mm-hmm. because when you're drinking cover, uh, as a person myself who has cover in his cupboards, is that you don't like noisy sounds. Yeah, because cover's like a real relaxant. It's a stimulant that really relaxes you, and the music you like, and that's why when you hear all those. Like you hear a song like Let's jam it mate, let's do it I forgot the words <laughs> So I'm just, just playing waffling off the, the, the Tongan Yeah And it's it's that mood of uh, And you've got the Tongans all there doing The picking and stuff Yeah <laughs> trying to imitate it, yeah. But um, what I'm trying to create here is that um, that genre of music is really made for cover. Yes, yes. You know, yes. And then you've got like us Cook Islanders. As soon as you come to a Cook Island, you know, we're like, Tweetina Mama, Tweetina Papa, Give me banana. So they're all like a hundred miles an hour. Got to get into, you know. Yeah. But Tongans, they've got a lot of, um, and but Tongans do have their, um, well, what's my f- Tonga? Um, I see your oi oi yo we see an alatu an na tau le le ki a te u si i ma fanonga e one one. So they have their fuss, but it's got that almost like that. That's why they, I think they more warm towards that reggae sound. Yeah. Because they like that. They got mm. that one. But the Cook Islands are like, they like that hundred. Techno. Yeah, like a choo choo train. <laughs> yeah. Here comes the train. Choo 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 choo. Yeah, so. I think every culture has definitely got something different. Absolutely. Like it's the music, it's just the base, basic way. But, you know, one of the things about the culture is in, in, in the Pacific era is it's all similar. You know, the language, the, 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 the culture, we all have a lot of similarities. Yeah, I think with um, what we got to understand, like if you look at the science and the depth of Polynesian music, it's really, uh, it's our main communication tool. And so exactly. music is used as you know, one to, to relax us, to educate us. Because it's not just about, you know, talano and talking. It's really about this, the spirit of being able to perform 
uh, it's just a part of how we communicate as Polynesians. And the lack, and when you go to workshops or programs that people are running, if you're lacking in Polynesian and you don't have the presence of music, there's something wrong with your program. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't yeah. have be running a program with Islanders. <laughs> as we touch on music, uh, Mike, did music find you or did you go out and find music? Uh, have you, I'm not too sure if you understand that question. I think every Polynesian is growing up in music. Yes. It's not something. Especially in the churches, eh? Church is where it begins. You, you don't have a choice with music. Mm. It's just something we've all been blessed with. It's something we all love indirectly or directly. You don't kind of just say, oh, I think I started, but well, actually, you don't know when you started because your mum was singing to you in the in the womb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, also just going through your bio, man, you're, 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 you're kind of like associated yourself with a, with a lot of things like the Itu Whanau group and mm. and um, also with the family violence. How, how, do you, how do you come across them and how did you get involved? My mother, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, my mother's been in the game of family harm, social services, um, right back in the beginning of uh, Māori Affairs. And she was quite instrumental in the setting up of the Final Waipareta Trust. Um, she was there at the beginning of John Rangiho and what they called the Pu'o Delta Two. These are all Maori uh, initiatives that were rolled out during the 70s slash early 80s. That be- that became the face of what we we know we now see as um, Oranga Tamariki and some of these new ministry names. And yeah. They're really adopting Māori names and so forth, and you're seeing the Polynesians now surfacing and emerging as real forces and claiming that Polynesianness, you know, and mm-hmm. naming things mm-hmm. like um, West Fono uh, under Tevita and some of these organisations, um, Vakatau Tua. So you've got all these um, different, and you know, just our indigeneity is very important these days. Yeah, I think there's been a. Um, a huge spike of identity of culture where the children these days I don't know, I, I don't know if it's just me but um they're kind of like sort of showing their culture and not ashamed of it you know what I mean more and I don't know if, it, if that's just social media or um, the children just I don't know finding themselves through the parents and stuff yeah that's really the establishment of our values mm-hmm. it's it's just something we value as Islanders, as Maori, mm-hmm. uh, as Polynesians. Mm-hmm. We value the fact that, uh, no, we don't just come from Aotearoa, we're from Polynesia. Mm-hmm. This is our unique value. Mm-hmm. This is how we roll. This is what makes us different from Africans, from Asians. When we talk Polynesians, we're talking this. Yes. Navigators, stars, mm-hmm. you know. You look at what we've, our ancestors, when I think about them, um, the feats and the things they had to conquer, amazing. Oh, Definitely, definitely. You know, when you talk about the, the Kalea yeah. from the Tongans, 200 men, warriors, how on earth did the Tongans rule, had to navigate the whole Pacific? Because they had a whole empire yeah. of islands right up to Fortuna, Wallace and Marquesas, across to New York. You know, the Tongans had to basically run a navy and they had to put men to go and service these islands, yeah. you know? At once upon a time, like... During COVID, another topic. During COVID, I as we all had a lot of free time, um, there was one stage me and my friend uh, we were talking about the how the Polynesians. I don't know. You can maybe touch on this. How the Polynesians navigated. I don't know. I mean, I'm still new to this. How they navigated from one time, for example, like Hawaii, and how they navigated, and they used the tides and the stars and and that sort of stuff. You know, and it's just it's just fun. It, that's a phenomenal skill. Phenomenal. Skill. There is um. Um, I'm not too sure who it was. Uh, I can't remember, but my wife got involved. This is probably this is before we got married. We went to the seminar, and um, he's a master salesman or whatever. You know, they did this canoes. You, uh, there was a few years back. Probably Hotsuru. Uh, I'm not too sure. And yeah, um, yeah they they him and, and, a, and a party of people they actually just navigated. No instruments, no cell phones, just using the Pick stars. The Busby. Um, I'm not too not 100 percent sure, man. But um, but yeah, man, just just. During the COVID was was going through that, but once again, man, that's that's so phenomenal. I to be honest, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know where to start, mate. Like when I go with my my mates on the on the fishing boat, um, I just oh yep, that's that island, that's Waikiki, Rangitoto, and that's where I get my bearings. But <laughs> if I go anything past that, mate, uh, visual bearings, <laughs> I'll be ringing someone on my phone. So phenomenal for today, 
but yes. absolutely back normal in those days. back then. Yeah, yeah. I can remember being a young kid in Puka Puka, um, going with my uncle Mamoy out to the ocean, and he was sailing us out there to a point where we couldn't see the land anymore. And I remember like being right in the deep Moana, and just thinking, "Where in heck is the, how?" Um, Night time took us back. How do you find, you know, just knew how to go wow. back. I, I was, I experienced, I was part of. How, a, how old were you roughly within? Four. Jeez. I was four. 79, 1979. Yeah. This was like the end of navigation within Puka Puka. So that was my experience of being, using that stargazing, which is normal. Wow. I remember rowing from Walimama, which is an island, on the outrigger, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? Like the wakama? Yep, yep, yep. And rowing to the, uh, my uncle used to row miles to the other island. I was, when I was four years old. Wow. Yeah, so I, I, I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. Far out. And I can live to, to tell his story. Mm. There's a lot of stories, eh? And a lot of things that we need to capture. And, um, and, unfortunately not like these this day and age where we got our cell phones and we, we got so many pictures and like you know i've got my grandpa but and his grandma we had photos of but we didn't have no one had photos of my great grandpa and you know sort of going on a different topic but man it's just it's just phenomenal you know the, the like you said it was normal back then now it's not really normal we, we find it was like man how did they do that you know yeah. what i mean so Man. I didn't know all this stuff. It just only this is me thinking as an adult mm -hmm. and a person who's just had to repatriate myself to things I grew up with because mm -hmm. I was brought up in total immersion. So when I say total immersion, I will at nine o'clock I was Catholic in Cook Island. Oh wow! And then at eleven o'clock I was Maori in Ratana. So I had to go between Cook Island, Maori. So you imagine when it was then. Our dad, who was our stepfather, yep. then we had our whalikitoa, our grandmother used to come. And my bros, my stepbrothers all spoke Tongan. And my mum put the big sign up in the house. <laughs> oh, well, if I got Tonga, if I got Baalangi. She put the big sign up, no speaking yeah. Tongan in the house. Yeah, yeah. But that was my mum's ignorance. You know, mm -hmm. this is Aotearoa. I don't come here and speak mm -hmm. Tongan. But I wish we had a kid speaking it. You know, this, you know, I was going to touch on it. Like one, one thing this stage, this day and age, that some of the kids... Um, this is my younger cousins. Mm. They, they tend to don't speak the language at home, and now. But you know what? One of the good, the best things that I actually like now is that um, the poly community are actually trying to bring it back. They're bringing it back. Yeah. You see it in the Maori. They're bringing bringing the language back, and, the language. and they're, they're actually it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to hear that there are more people trying to um, speak their native tongue. And um, and not too long ago, I was when I was in the states. Um, nothing against the Tongans in the states, but. Uh, um, a lot of them, they they struggle, um, you know, my age and under. Um, even the youth, they just know the basic tongue and they just know, go and get that. Um, here in New Zealand, it's not too bad. But um, like you said, eh, it's, it's, it's good to uh, see the parents here in Aotearoa in New Zealand to bring that back to, to, to stick. Because as you said, uh, Mike, it's, it's kind of like the foundation and we need to keep those roots within the family. Is that something that you implement in home with your kids? No, I've been guilty of not being proactive around our language. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that in my partner's family, they are Samoans. Mm -hmm. So they speak predominantly, the parents speak Samoan. So I'm thankful for that language. Yeah. So, um, but um, I've made a commitment to my kids because uh, we're rolling out um, a te reo Māori strategy at, um, at her school. St. Mary McKillop School Primary. Yep, yep. And I wanted to learn basic Māori and just some puka puka. Mm. And the Samoan is here. So for me, having grown up, like going back to Ponsonby, I only heard one language. I just could, could understand. What was that? I didn't say Tongan. <laughs> Tongan was the easiest to understand. Really? Because Tongan's got one word for lots of things. Oh yeah, that's true. You know, it's a very like, it's a very um, you got one word. Whereas if you go to Samoans and and especially Pukapukans, Pukapukans got you know how we say how, Pukapukans got so many versions of come, come yeah. here. They've got so many different words for that and for bottles. Every single word might have like at least five to nine, 
<laughs> so you got a whole vocab. It, is that the di- Is it because it's the dialects, or or is it is it how you um, put the the word into a sentence? Was that kind of like the same with Tongan as well? Is how you might put a bottle, the word bottle, with a sentence, and it might just. Or is it the Mind dialects? you, I'm only talking about the common language for oh, Tongan because okay. gotcha. Tongan's got a few very. Um, they got the. Yes, you know, yeah, they're um a little bit different from the one the commoners' language, and so Pukapukan sort of the same too. Hierarch, hierarchical levels to speaking. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Let's just talk about the Pukapuka. I mean, is that a, like? I'm sorry, and apologies for those who are actually watching and listening yeah. later on. Um, Pukapuka is is it like short for Cook Island or just just Help me paint a picture and help help paint the picture for those who are listening and yeah, watching. Yeah, good question. So the Cook Island has 15 islands. One five. One five. Yeah, yeah. And Rarotonga is the capital. Mm-hmm. And Pukapuka is one of those islands. Oh, okay. And then you may have heard of Aitutaki. Yeah, I, I was, I was going to bring that up. I've got a few mates from Aitutaki and they right. said, oh, you got to come. That's the most... And correct My grandfather's from, from there. They said that's, that's the most beautiful island in the in the Cook Island, but everyone says that about the island. But I don't know. You, oh, Aitutaki is probably the most outstanding island in wow. the Cook Islands. Wow. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. <coughs> um, Mangaya, which is another island in the Cook Islands, is the oldest island in the Pacific. Oh wow! It was one of the very first um, mountains to pop up out of. Uh, so it's been carbon dated. So Mangaya, and there's some remnants of the Tongans having visited that area. Mm-hmm. Um, the remnants of stone walls and the masonry that went in during, I don't know, 700, 500 years ago. Um, wow. So the remnants of the Tuitonga um, are present in the Mangayan history. But even before the Tuitonga came there, the Mangayans were already a people way before the Tongans visited, hopefully in peace, not to... But kai puaka, eh? Oh, yeah. Some people can eat anything, man. So, <laughs> and puka puka is one, and so puka pukans have two islands: mm-hmm. puka puka and Naso. And Naso is another island, say fifty kilometers just away from puka puka. You can just see it with your bare eye, naked eye. That, does puka puka mean anything in English? Does it have a meaning? Well, in Māori, it means book. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, book, book. Mm. I mean, sorry, book. book. <laughs> they they <laughs> book. call me there. Are you a book, book? Oh, wow. Puka, puka is a Māori for book, but I didn't know what the name puka, puka is. I think it, I know we have a puka ama. It's a tree. Yeah. So I'm not really too sure. Uh, there is a name, but yeah. I haven't taken that. I will find out. Yeah, man. That'd be interesting, it's eh? A, it has many names. Te Ulo Te Watu. Um, um, the Danger Island. That's um, the first episode. We'll of talk Wale. about that, man. Danger yeah. Island for the and for those that are actually watching. We have a small snippet here of the uh, Wally Proud, and we, damn, we're gonna we're gonna touch on that very very shortly, man. Awesome. Very shortly. And a little bit about those four guys that sung at Wally Proud, uh, the Wally vocals: Iria Matangi, Polo Matangi, Saki, and um, who was the one? Paki. Um, these four boys have been singing for a long time. They're all my relations. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just really was wonderful to have them there. They're Pukapukans. So Pukapuka is made up of three atolls. Wale Mamao, which is that word, Wale Proud, I, I, yeah, I coined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Motukotawa and Mutuko. So these are the three main islands within that make up. Because when our ancestor Mataliki came out of the ground, he busted out of the ground. And so Te Ulo Te Watu means like the head of the rock. And so oh, when he wow. came up out of the earth and uh-huh. he, the legend of it, he exploded and these islands separated from our ancestor Mataliki. <clears throat> and apparently Mataliki took for him, his wife was actually a woman that was from Tonga. And he he he, Interesting. he had children to this Tongan woman. <clears throat> and um, they bore the descendants of this. Um, yeah, so all it really is is... Um, anecdotal or fact or whatever you want to call it they're the stories of our people um the creation stories of our people and it shows you how you know we have been interacting for centuries yeah yeah Yeah. you know that history does show that like you said mike that the um polynesian have been interacting for centuries longer than we longer than these airplanes that should basically come in man i can't wait let's get into this man this wally proud um you know, I actually looked into the phone. I forgot to take a screenshot because I was going to put it up on this live stream. But 
you remember, do you remember our first meeting? Do you know when? Do you know when we had our first meeting? In in history. No, uh, no, no, no. You and I, you and I about this this whole Wale Proud thing. Yeah, BK. BK. Do you know? Right. Do you know what date? I, I I've cheated because I actually looked at my phone. What's the sixteenth of Jan? This year. Early this year. Yeah, bro. That was a long time ago, man. And I know a lot of things happened uh, during that time. And I um. Oh, let, let me pull this up. I'll show you, man. I'll show you. Bro, I wish I was that kind of there, a person. Yeah, there, there. Oh, my gosh. 16th of Jan. 16th, 16th of Jan. Jan. 2020. Let me just do something. I'm going to try and do something here. I know we're live. <laughs> really odd. Hold on, mate. Let me try and get this into the camera. 16th of Jan. BK. By the way, if you're watching, we didn't have no food at all. It's just talking about Wally Proud. Mikade, let's talk about Wally Proud. Thank you. What what is it? What is it? What what is it? And and I know a lot of people thought it was whale. It's not whale because there's no H in it, man. So <laughs> Wally Proud, man. Give it to us. Well, if people know now that sort of my work is in family violence and the family harm space. And one of the key things I try to do is to foster um community part of fostering pride back into our communities so my intention is not just um, to run Wale Proud but to do lots of different islands Samoa Proud, Tonga Proud so I've got a huge but I'm creating an industry really for to expose a lot of those young people who we don't engage with who don't come in to our gatherings who yeah. aren't engaged yeah they don't engage one because they just maybe feel foreign they're not comfortable they don't know how to engage and part of that engagement with Wale Proud is exposing all those other genres of creativity and artistic talents that our people have. So uh, for the first time, we got to experience like Max Dowers. Yeah, man. You know, these are some of the most, you know, and I wanted to spoil, um, though we may not have got the huge audience that we want, it wasn't about that. We really wanted to put to test how we capture it mm. and and the industry that we're trying to create and the story we're trying to tell. We had the the Wale vocals turned up. Never before have we had Wale's come through hip-hop, R&B, singing, a band, R&B. The aggressors. The aggressors. Yeah, it's amazing. Backed up by John Chong Ni, R&B man himself from AKA Brown, Rico Tali from Arija. So I really wanted to just put it out there like, this is what I want to do. This is the direction I want to go. This is the step I want to take to try and reach my young, the young people from Wales. And it's the same direction I'm going to take when I'm reaching Tongans. I mean, there's so many other acts like opera, slam poets, artists. So out in the foyer, we want to be doing art. We want to be doing sculptures. We want to do all that stuff. And most importantly, the circus, bringing the kids in. So, so often we leave those little kids out. Yeah. But those little kids, they're the magic to me. They're the ones they're looking up to these older kids. And if I can get those older kids to put it on for these young little babies and have them perform in the show, that's no one's doing that. <laughs> man, let me tell you one thing, man, for those actually watching, uh Wale Proud, um, I had an opportunity to I didn't do anything. I just I, I did the easy job, man, by just recording and and, and doing the production for for Mikari and, and the crew. But uh, man, I you know what? <clears throat> I didn't know you know, like I know we 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 chatted in January about this in, in Burger King, and you painted this picture. And I let me be honest with you, you painted this picture, and I was like, oh yeah, man, I, I can see it. But after, like you said, it wasn't that big, and no disrespect for you, it wasn't that big. And um and um, but you know what, I I got shocked because there was, there, there there was actually a crowd. We're gonna play a small snippet after this. Um, but when I came to you afterwards and I said, mate, you are actually on something huge. You know, I think I, I caught a snippet mm. of your vision on where this is going. And for those who are actually watching, man, like um, uh, Michael will he, let you know when, when the next episode is. Um, but man, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and like, like what you said, Mike, like the kids got involved. You got everyone involved. You got um, a few people coming in as well. Um, it was you catered for everyone. Basically, you catered for everyone. Yeah, that diversity is important. Diversity and who we entertain, and it was risk a lot of risk um, trying to do something like that. But you kind of think, nah, 
there was no risk at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just celebration. It was good, eh? Yeah. Uh, funny thing, man, like I know you gave me a T-shirt. Um, <laughs> so I know one of my, my cousins say, oh, I like nice T-shirt. And <laughs> if you're watching, cousin, I'm not going to name you out in here. Um, we all know what that means. Eh? Oh, nice T-shirt. Nice T-shirt. I can't find the T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, it was a nice Wally Proud um, <laughs> T-shirt as well. Uh, tell us about those t-shirts uh, and, and how you you, had, you want to give a sh- the shout out to that supplier who actually printed up about 100, 400 t-shirts or something like that for you? Yeah, I think it's New Zealand Screen Printing in Manuko. Uh, thank to the brother of, uh, Philip <coughs> for your services. Um, we we managed to get 100 t-shirts and they were, all went. I know. you. <sighs> and so when you had, like the people that were there bought basically everything. Wow. Um, you can see, I don't want to brag on about like... Um, you know, I don't want to paint a picture like it was like, but really, that was popping in my eyes. Mm-hmm. To me, it was it was like a dream come true for my people, and for those of my people that turned up, my cousins that came to support. There was history there. Never, I love doing stuff that no one's ever done. You know, and, and and one thing I'm tired of is people always exclude the little children. Yeah. And no one really <laughs> thinks about, you know, you watch these little kids. If we build, because oh, there's this Buddhist saying that I always use, you know, people don't care too much about what you do today. Mm-hmm. It's what they remember about today. That's a nice one. It's the memory. That's a very nice one. And that's all I'm trying to do is build powerful memories for the little kids. Because mm-hmm. they're going to remember, like when I think back to my memories being on that ocean, with my uncle, powerful memory, man. The ocean with your uncle in the middle of nowhere. Those are the kind of mem. That's my standard. And I've always, I've always got those memories. I've got to match them, but in an urban setting. Mm. Yeah, and, and one of my talents is I'm just good at making things happen. Whether they work or whatever, that's someone else's job to take yeah, it. Yeah, uh, it was a very, very good experience. Before we play this um, clip, Mike. Um, uh, these four gentlemen. Uh, do you want to give them a bit of a background? Who they are? Um, it's, the, it's the clip that they sang there. Is it the is it the Cook Island national anthem? That's the Puka Puka New Zealand national anthem. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. just um just um I don't have the clip, so I've just prepared the clip for the for the singing part. Yeah. But I'm just uh, just introduce who they are, what they do, and the group before I play it. Yeah. This is Saki, so Saki Saki, um, Baki Matenga. And Eddie and Paula Omatangi of the Wale Vocals singing um, the Pukapuka New Zealand National Anthem in their genre at Wale Proud. Please tune in for on the 23rd of February. We've officially, added, officially launched the second Wale Proud, the episode two. We have eight episodes, so we've done one. We've got another seven to go. So episode two starts in the 23rd of February, 2021. And we will post the dates on the Wally Proud Facebook page and hopefully on the Fano channel website. Yeah. Um, that's going to be coming up. And of course, with Lobstream, who are going to be um, assisting us to capture the visuals and the audios of the event. So this is the Wally Proud. We're definitely going to have them back on the 23rd because they've done a wonderful job. And you get to meet your uncles, your cousins, uh, who are in the Wale vocals. Awesome. Mike, we're just going to take time out. We'll, we'll play this clip. And for those who are watching, um, this is just a small little snippet of what you probably would have missed out. Check, Here check. we go. Oh, we'll start with the anthem. Yeah. All right, so we're going to start with the anthem. Tee 
Thank you. That was from Danger Island, episode one. Mm. Brother, I can see you holding back the tears, man. How did that make yeah. you feel? It's because um, you know our our people came from islands far away. They didn't come on the canoe, but they came on the plane, mm-hmm. and that's what that song talks about. Mm-hmm. And that's why I feel watery eyed. Because um, I know the journey they came to a foreign land, even though it wasn't a foreign land. I always look at New Zealand, it doesn't just belong to Māori. Polynesians, you know, we've been interacting with this place we call Aotearoa for a long time. Our relation, our cousin, our ancestor, Kupe, came from the islands. And um, we've been trading, interacting for centuries, maybe even thousands of years. That's the sentiment, that's the somber feeling I get when I hear that song because it says, go, 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 go and stay where you are and be happy wherever you are, even though you're not here in the motherland. That's what that song talks about. Mm. Yeah, so. It's beautiful, like, um, just the harmony of these four young gentlemen, how they put that rendition together. Um, and like I said, man, you just had to be there live. Um, and for those who are actually watching, um, 23rd of February, ladies and gents, is the yeah. next one. Uh, get your tickets. Um, Mike and, and Co. Uh, will be will be posting up on their Facebook and for tickets. And uh, let me tell you one thing, man. You, you're you going to probably have to order a few more T-shirts, brother. <laughs> <laughs> more than T-shirts, mate. We're going to be having caps. We're also going to be... Um, we're going to be... Um, populating those bags with freebies as well wow it's not just about taking money out of the community mm-hmm. uh if anything i'm only taking money out of the community to give back to the artists mm-hmm. that's really my intention just giving back Get, it's yeah. all about giving back hey and part of it is under covid you know we've gone for a tough time and i'm trying to create opportunities to put money back into the artists pockets mm-hmm. um, because one year they may be working but you know these jobs that we're working at, it's not enough money being made. Yeah, exactly. And if I can be part of giving money back into individuals or bands or any, I know that industry because I've I've done music all my life and I've made money from it, and I know how to generate that kind of uh, an income for my people. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for <laughs> for episode two. As you, you know, you've given me the dates, so. Um, don't even message me about the future dates. You're just going <laughs> to have to wait. And, uh, um, you know, like I said, we had a lot of success. 
you know what I mean? Like you said, it won't be huge, but it's just the impact that you put. And I saw that in the crowd. I literally saw that in the crowd and, and the people, they're so proud. Um, and to have someone like Iconic like you and to mm. put something on for the community. Thanks, brother. Um, it's, it's very touching. And to see kids um, just embracing their culture, um, you know, like without, there was, Dancing, oh, you had that, you had that, um, was she Cook Island? That, 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 dancer? yeah, Ernestino, Ernestino, you Model. had her come in. Uh, I know we're talking about all these performances, but um, Pacific uh, Media, you're just gonna have to wait to, for Mike to put up that video. Um, but like I said, you just had to be there live, you know what I mean? And just, yeah. just, it, it I wanted to also there. just thank Pacifica Proud, yep, my friend Marie Schmidt, she provided those cartoon characters, yeah, they're good, yeah, and so I think the whole intention there was about. Because when I do Wally Proud, what I was thinking was making the whole event like a movie. Yes. So we share the video because we've got that whole big screen. Yeah. And then we pause it and what pops out is a performance. Oh, wow. That's connected to the theme. So um, part two, episode two, and I will sort of confirm it in some context is, is it's called, episode two is called In the Beginning, Mataliki. Oh, is this giving going me back to the, the chills, bro? This so, is giving me the chills. Yeah, bro. Say that again. Say that again. Say that again. In the beginning, Mataliki. What? And it's, it's our crazy. creation story. Wow. It's almost like uh, um, going back to the Bibles and Genesis and then it's all like aligned. Creation, eh? Let there be light. Exciting. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> episode two. There hey. it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Episode two, twenty fifth of twenty third of February. I, can't, I don't know. I just, uh, sorry, I, I missed the boat, but the, the beginning or something. Can like I just it. tell you part three? Episode it's up three. Up to you, bro. You're, 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 you're the boss, bro. You're the episode boss. Episode three is called The Matriarchs of Puka Puka. We are. So we're going. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We'll let them think about it. No doubt we're going to have a, a, another live podcast just to, just to promote this um, wow. as well. Um, when you're free, Mike. Probably just before the February twenty third, probably a week or two, two weeks away, we'll, we'll we'll come again and we'll talk about it and we'll hype things up because, to be honest, we probably don't have to hype things up because it's gonna be hyped up already. But um, you man, build it, so, they'll come. Exactly. Oh, I've heard that before, man. I've heard that before. We build it, they come. I've seen it work many times. Yeah. Because there's yeah. been no structure. Yeah. Yeah. You build it. Yeah. You build something. People always come. Mhm. Mm mhm. Yeah. Man, super excited. Execute. Super excited, man! <laughs> Super excited for for this for these episodes. Um, we we touched on COVID, brother. How was COVID wow. for you and, and, and the family and the far now? A lot of Zoom meetings. Yeah, and it's very. Uh, I will say, online grew. The online businesses were really successful. Those who were engaging in online, so I was doing a lot of online sharing, you know, digitally. But I missed that community, uh, face to face cousins visiting hugging you know i missed that yeah you can't beat that hey eh? same thing live you can't beat it we are know? that we are those are the kind of people we are we mm. have to be around our people mm. and mm. to not be able to access them mm. um is a no-no let's delve into mental health man was there anything that that you found maybe not only you but your family or your friends that kind of maybe affected them mentally i think there's lots of levels of mental health yes um <laughs> Believe it or not, we as Pacific Islanders and as Maoris, we've had our um, we've had our processes of how we deal with mental health. Mm -hmm. You'd be you'd be really surprised at the science behind Islanders and how we um, how we view mental health and how we ex the solutions we have. Um, but that's not right now. The question is, what, you know, what's going on with mental health? I think there's some interesting. Um, I don't even think they're interesting. There's just some. I will say demons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, sorry to use such a, a word. We call it in Māori, tanifa. Yes. I think that's a better word. Demons, very... Tongan, we call it te volo. Koi te volo. Tāihe te volo. It's not a good thing. But yeah, but... Um, um, yeah, and that's, um, that's a, a Christian lens on it, which is fine, because it really is that. And it's a, it's a negative thing. It's really uh, this mental health for me is everything around negativity and negative energy that has really polarized our people into just mm -hmm. feeling worthless and feeling unappreciated. And a lot of the work that I do with the Etu Whanau is just really focused on positive change. Mm -hmm. Kōrero just speaks about positive language. Mm -hmm. Afi, manaki, mana manaki is just helping support community. 
uh, three things Michael Joseph Savage, the the old prime president of Prime Minister of yeah. New Zealand, yeah. a roof over your head, to be loved, and just something to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's probably the key. You know, people just wanting to be loved. And if anything, um, you know the people out there that need to be hugged, who need to be loved, and you are guilty, and I'm guilty of not using positive language you know we've put people down in our history you know we've probably been guilty of that oh, i'm the worst mate you know I what i mean the worst and we need to just remind ourselves that in our culture negative language and swearing it's not really part of polynesian culture mm -hmm. you know and it's it's sad to see even in, in te reo maori we don't even have things like swear words yeah you know and i'd, I'd be um, interested to find out these swear words that we have in pacific have they just been created over what period of time? Mm. You know, because mm. most, most swear words I find in the Pacific are metaphorical to do with an action of some sort, but never really, I think, um, there to really take people out and put them down. Just mm. Anyway, that's just my my view. But yeah, just the more of the positive stuff, that's the stuff we need to surround our kids with. It mm. starts with the little kids, you know, being a little kid and being hopeless and not being surrounded with love and always in fear. You also mentioned as well, not too long ago, this was offline, we had this conversation, and also starts from home as well. Always the home, brother. It is. You know, when there's love at home, you know that Mormon song? Yeah. It's yeah. a real it's a real truth. You know, without the, the presence of love and kids feeling love, I can tell you now, I can walk into any home around here and I can, and kids just, it's all, it's all to do with power, it's all to do with ego control within the home. Mm-hmm. There's no humility. You know how our culture, Whakatonga is really about humility. It is, it is. You look at Salote. Is. She was the greatest demonstrator of humility. We only need to exercise ourselves on those examples. Humility and service. Mm -hmm. You know? So we've got great we've got great learnings just in our our leaders. And so yeah, um, the Mao movement with the Samoans, Malia Toa. Even though he was given a name by the kings of Tonga. <laughs> yeah. You ever been to Tonga before? Many times. Yeah. yeah. When was the last time you've been, been to the kingdom? Oh, it's been a while. We were there for the Hey Lala Jam or Jam was performing. Oh, oh yeah. it was a hard case story, bro. We performed that um not till we before performed that till favour, but um there was a stadium there, a basketball uh Artele. You know, oh, Artele yep, Stadium? Yep. I know of Artele. The concert was so packed because it was Kapenas, Fiji, Jamo Jam. Or Lono Rogers, uh, so we had all these international bands playing there that night, and the locals were so angry they couldn't get in. They went and cut the power. Hey. <laughs> wow! So all we had was drums, two sets of drums, and so they just did this long as drum solo battle, and the princess um, below level in them was sitting at the front, you know, and um, the people just had a great time. And then when the lights came on, eventually they got the power. But the Atele boys. You know those Artelia boys, man. <laughs> They're crazy. No comment, man. No <laughs> comment. No, Artelia no College. Comment. Oh my gosh. No comment. Yeah, well, it was good. Eh? And um, the Cook Islands. When was the last time you've been back? Been back home? Yeah, it's been three or four years since I've been yeah. back to the Cook Islands. Yeah. Uh, you still have family? Family back there? Yeah, heaps. We all got family. Of course, of course. I, I mean, mainly just I just want to stay in New Zealand. Yeah. I'm yeah. just over traveling overseas. Yeah. I think the last big trip I took was to China. Me and my brother went up to Beijing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just exploring. You That's know? different, eh? Way different. Mm. I learned so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm into my Chinese um, philosophy, Confucianism, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. medicines. And you know, I really got into tea, Chinese mm -hmm. tea and uh, and medicines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. True. Mike, you got a number for us, mate? We we do for a little bit of a number. Do you want to? Wow. Give us a give us a give what us a, a song. Guitar. Oh man. Maybe something Cook Island. Something Cook Island. Oh, I sing a a Puka Puka and love song. Oh. Da pele ko te lau o te mai le. Tu ku mai to a vali dinu. Ke o mo mo wai o tau wakili wo 
kotelo pa te nei komanongo ka wota wa ki te tawa te langi ke wai yo wai e wai nga mata wa ke mana tu wa tu ki yo Penu penu le le, na ve ve dia imato kumana ko. Ta pele ko te lau o te mai le. Tu ku mai to alvalidinu. Ke o mo mo ai o taua kiliwo ko te lo pa te nei kau manongo ata wai wolo de mane ke tu ki te langi ita kuti ale mata u ala wela. Ke mana tu wa tu ki o penu penu le le na ve ve di ai mato kuma na ko na ve ve di ai mato kuma na ko ta pele ko te lau te mai le. It was beautiful, man. Thanks. Give us a bit of background about that music and what does it mean. Yeah, tapile kote lau te maile. Um, so I come from a village called Ngake, and our our emblem for is it in Puka Puka? Is yeah. It? So its other name is Holland because oh, the okay. Holland missionaries came there. And, yeah, and then you've got Dato, which is uh, the Japanese, because the Japanese in World War Two were cruising around there. Yeah. Then you've got Loto, which is the Americans. Wow. Yeah, so we just adopted these Balangi names or Japanese, whatever. So, um, yeah, and um, I'm saying to the girl, I'm saying to pass me your um, your coconut oil to mm-hmm. um, to smear on my skin. Mm-hmm. I want to rub our skins, your beautiful young skin. And mm-hmm. Puka Puka in context, you know, of yeah, uh, yeah. appreciating and admiring each other. And then... Um, when I look at you, my eyes are burning with fire, like the fire in the middle of the volcano. <laughs> Beautiful, man. Who, who, who created the song? Is it, is it, was it it's someone else? That, that's my song I wrote. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Copyright that, mate. Copyright. <laughs> yeah, I've written lots of songs in lots wow. of different languages. Uh, I um, song Writing songs is one of my passions as mm-hmm, well. Mm-hmm. Uh, in English, Maori songs, Pukapukin songs, Tongan songs, Samoan. Uh, haven't done a Hawaiian one yet. Mm-hmm. Tahitians. Uh, spend, spend a bit of time entertaining in Tahiti. Wife and I was in Tahiti, uh, I think it was in April. Man, wow. it was different. It was beautiful. It was beautiful there. The beaches were amazing. Uh, I struggled in Tahiti because the women there are so beautiful. <laughs> they honestly are. Yeah, I was like, oh, shiri amor, shiri amor. Yeah, it was just... um. The only thing I, I couldn't get the only thing the only thing I, I just couldn't like get my head around was generally when you see a Polynesian they're um, speaking in Samoan or, or Tongan and, and that sort of stuff. But when you uh, you go up to them and like for example we go to the market and yeah, bonjour, and I was like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm Tongan, now. Chinese, <laughs> French, <laughs> Tongan. <laughs> oh, I don't know, like I'm Tongan. And then they go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's like, um. Yeah, it was different. It was different. It was yeah. different. But um, that's a barrier. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And so my time and because I speak Maori in Cook Island. Yes. That's all I spoke. I didn't speak French. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was lucky. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Man, that's amazing. Eh? Um, man, I really, really excited. Really grateful for this opportunity, Mike. Um, once again, for those who are actually um tuning in, uh, where he's tuning in live again. Um, this will be also available on the um, um, Spotify, YouTube, 
um, Apple Podcasts and all that kind of stuff for Feature uh, Mike, we're, we're so happy to, to have you. Um, we're grateful for your your time, especially coming in, in into your house and, and running this live podcast. Wow. A little bit different, hey? This is transformational. <laughs> this is like another living. Yeah, and the um, reason why I like to do this, it's, it's, it's we're coming into the home. This is where it started for you. Um, yeah. You always been in Mangare? Yeah, God has put me here. Wow. Yeah. wow. I haven't always been here. My um, um, my partner's from here. Yeah. And yeah. we've just, um, we've just, bought this house here and uh she's happy mm -hmm. it's all about her happiness mm -hmm. and yeah i just uh, navigate around other places too so i'm, I'm blessed i'm maori um i've got whenua in aotearoa mm -hmm. that i can go to mm -hmm. but not necessarily what my partner likes to go to mm -hmm. <laughs> because ah oh, there's maori's gonna be there <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, cousins, eh? Yeah, Must yeah. be just the cousins. Oh. No, nothing against the Maori. Probably, probably just your cousins, bro. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, it's a Samoan thing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing against the Samoan. If it's a Tongan, oh, tawo, tawo, uh, tawo. Yeah, Tongan, eh? Man. But once again, man, thank you so much for, for being here. It's been an honor, man. I'm looking forward to um, doing a, another one with you later on, um, closer to the episode two. Um, Let's just do a shout out. I want to do the last shout out on, on and promote the, the episode two in February 23rd. Yeah, just Wally Proud, 23rd of February 2021. Uh, thank you to all my friends, the Kurawai Aroha Aotearoa, uh, Etu Fano, to all my friends in the Etu Fano movement, Pacific Proud, to all the people in, uh, in the, the family harm space, and uh, to everybody out there. And maybe just, um, just want to thank the Lord with a bit of a prayer, just to say uh, thank you very much. I just want to say. Um, give thanks to you, Lord, uh, for bringing Lenny here and bringing this movement uh, with the Lop Stream and, of course, Wally Proud and everything that we're doing uh, to confront this um, formidable enemy, which is family violence and especially harm to our women and children. Help our men uh, to uh, be protectors of our women. Help us to execute our values into our communities so that they can create the vibrancies and uh, the futures and the dreams that we know are possible. We ask this, Lord, in your name to cover us and that your spirit be with us in all things that we do, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Once again, thank you guys for actually tuning in. Do subscribe and do watch the, the continue um, live stream on Facebook and the other platforms. Sir, thank you so much. Magali Pao. We, we, we're not going to let you off this easy, mate. Just one more song just to <laughs> sign off and then we will end right there. Thank you Sometimes so much. I think about where I was from The poetry seashells Hot summer sun Pacific colors wherever they may be Tahiti, Tokelau, Samoa, Fiji Sing to their glory I the tongue on you Sing to their glory on his way, in a person, I see the silver, Tahiti took a lot, so I'm more Fiji. Sing to their glory, I the tongue on your way. Sing to their glory, I the tongue on you way. Ladies and gentlemen, Mikade Pao, give it up to him. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Everyone have a good weekend. See everyone. Kakite.